Okay, so I realized, based on some of the comments that I've gotten, um, that when I am doing canning videos, I seem to work off the assumption that most of you know what you're doing, have been canning for a while or whatever, are experienced. So anyway, um, I just wanted to apologize for that. And what I want to do now is kind of talk about some of the basics of canning. And then I want to explain uh, what we would call rebel canning, which is kind of what I do, but I'll explain that a little bit more in a little bit. First off, the very basic rule of thumb is high acid foods can be water bath canned. And this would include things like tomatoes and most fruits. Then um, low acid foods such as um, vegetables and meats, poultry, seafood, um, and they even include dairy products in this category. Um, they are required to be pressure canned. And then the third thing is that milk, butter, cheese, other dairy products should never be canned. Um, anyway, that's the very basic rule of thumb. Okay, so the National Center for Home Food Preservation and the USDA say, and I quote, Low acid foods have pH values higher than 4.6. They include red meats, seafood, poultry, milk, and other fresh vegetables except for most tomatoes. High acid foods have a pH of 4.6 or lower. They include fruits, pickles, sauerkraut, jams, jellies, marmalades, and fruit butters. And then it goes on to say, although tomatoes usually are considered an acid food, some are now known to have pH values slightly above 4.6. Figs also have pH values slightly above 4.6. Therefore, if they are to be canned as acid foods, these products must be acidified to a pH of 4.6 or lower with lemon juice or citric acid. Properly acidified tomatoes and figs are acid foods and can be safely processed in a boiling water. The other exception would be um, white peaches. They also have a pH that is slightly above the 4.6 um, so they can't be uh, water bath canned all low acid foods should be sterilized at temperatures above 240 to 250 degrees. This is attainable with pressure canners operated at 10 to 15 psi. At temperatures above 240 to 250, the time needed to destroy bacteria in low acid canned food ranges from 20 to 100 minutes. That is the reason why some things are processed for 20 minutes, some things are processed for 40 minutes, you know, whatever. Now, basically, it's the density of the food, um, how big the chunks or pieces or whatever may be, and how you pack them, whether it was cold pack or hot pack or whatever, um, because that makes a difference in how long it takes for the very center to reach the temperatures it's supposed to reach for the proper amount of time to kill anything that might be in them. As a matter of fact, here's what they say. The exact time depends on the kind of food being canned, the way it is packed into jars, and the size of jars. The time needed to safely process low acid foods in a boiling water canner ranges anywhere from 7 to 11 hours, which is why they tell you to pressure can because that's a long time it would take a very long time in order to meet the temperatures needed. And the time needed to process acid foods in boiling water varies from 5 to 85 minutes. And then as far as the dairy products, 
um, this is what they, they they have a long explanation about the fat content and and things like that on why you can't can dairy products but this is what it says despite what is found on the internet there are no science based methods for home canning of cheeses milk butter or other dairy products all right the other thing that you have seen me do okay well first let me explain rebel canners a lot of people seem to think that that just means that we do things willy-nilly the way we want to just because we want to um, and and that's just the, not the case bottom line is that when someone is doing what they call rebel canning they have usually gone through and done the research and you know looked at the the scientific data and they decide for themselves based on the knowledge rather or not they want to attempt to can something now here's the key when I read what it said about the dairy products I'm gonna read this one more time it says despite what is found on the internet there are no science-based methods for home canning of cheeses milk butter or other dairy products what that means is in most cases a lot of these processes that they tell you you cannot do are only because they have not had the time to test them themselves that is why they can't recommend it so basically that does not mean that canning milk or butter or cheese is not safe it just means that they have not tested it so jars and lids they tell you that the regular two-piece two-piece lids are this portion is only meant to be used once um, a lot of us again back to that rebel canning terminology um, if we do not damage the outside edge and if the rubber the rubber here is still in good shape I will reuse these uh, they're, for one thing they're too expensive secondly um, this day and time you can't always find them so anyway that's a choice you have to make for yourself I do reuse these as long as they are not damaged they also tell you that you cannot use jars and lids from products that you buy at the grocery store and I believe all right, I don't have any right now but one of the things that it does say is most commercial pint and quart size mayonnaise or salad dressing jars may be used with new two-piece lids for canning acid foods what that means is I know this is a wide mouth but the regular mouth two-piece lids like this usually fit on the glass mayonnaise or salad dressing jars um, so they're telling you that you those are okay to use but only if you're going to be water bath canning it says you should expect more seal failures and jar breakage but I'm gonna be honest with you I have had more um, seal failures with these than I have with any other kind of lid um, anyway it says these jars have a narrower sealing surface and are tempered less than mason jars and they may be weakened by repeated contact with metal spoons or knives 
used in dispensing the mayonnaise or salad dressing. And seemingly insignificant scratches in glass may cause cracking and breakage while processing jars in a canner. So, they're telling you that it's more likely to have a jar break even if you're using the water bath. But, I would not recommend using those jars for um, pressure canning. They are very thin. And this, that's one of the things I want to show you right now is they also say the same thing about the lids on these jars. You will notice these lids have a rubber seal around the outside here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but these also have that push button center and they screw on enough to get a good grip on them. Um, so I will reuse these. I use these jars all the time. Now the difference between this jar and this jar, you'll see for one thing this one does not screw on as far but it does screw on enough to hold it on. It also has the rubber and it also has the push button top. But you'll notice this jar, you can tell by feeling of it that it is much thinner than this jar. So, truth is, I honestly usually will pressure can even in these jars. I've done it many times. Um, I have not had one of these break. Um, and I do reuse both of these types of lids. Like I said, as long as it has the rubber and the push button and can be tightened on enough to hold the lid in place while it's being processed. So anyway, that is one of the things I wanted to talk about. You saw me can milk. Um, and also, I did not find the information when I was looking it up this time. But the Tatler lids that you saw me use, these are the Tatler lids. And these come with, instead of having the rubber built in, they come with these rubber rings that you place them on just like that and then when you put them on the jar it creates a seal just like these would um, and I will tell you now this portion can be used over and over and over and over again as long as it's not damaged according to the website where you buy the Tattlers they say that the rubber piece should not should only be used 10 times. I have the same issue as I do when they talk about reusing these. As long as this rubber piece is not damaged in any way, it's not cracking, it's not getting brittle, um, I will reuse them. I will reuse them until there is something wrong with them and then I will throw them away. But these lids are definitely much more expensive than buying these. The difference is, especially this part, is going to last forever. And these to replace are very cheap. I think it's like $25 or $30 or something like that for a bag of 100 So, anyway. All right. So, bottom line is this. If you are new to canning, I would recommend that you follow all of the guidelines set out by the USDA and the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Um, if you think at some point, once you have gotten the hang of it, um, that you might want to branch out a little bit and try you know, using these jars or reusing your lids or canning milk 
or whatever. My suggestion is that you learn as much as you can about how the canning process works and why it works and why they say what they say about the different methods to use and what you can and cannot do. Once you have a good understanding of that, it's a whole lot easier to make an educated based decision when deciding if you're going to stray from what the canning gods tell you that you can or cannot do. That's just my opinion. Anyway, I wanted to clear that up. I will try and do a better job in the future when I am doing my videos of giving a little bit more detail about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and where my recipes come from and all that kind of fun stuff. So anyway, I just wanted to clear that up because I had a couple of comments, uh, people asking questions that made me realize I wasn't giving enough information. So that's it.